graphic design? Can you make a living at that? Three, two, one, fun, 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 Welcome to Design Futures, a show about what happens after design school. I'm Chris St. Cyr, and my guest on this episode is Kim Skudlarik. Is that right? <laughs> yep. I got it right. Kim is a special projects artist for MGM Resorts event production. You're right, that is a mouthful. Where yeah. she fabricates props and signage for MGM properties. She also has a side business creating custom hand-painted model cars that has a solid five-star rating on Etsy <laughs> and a long wait list. She is a 2014 graduate of the College of St. Rose. How's life in the desert? It's great. What do we need to talk about? I, there's, there's definitely <laughs> things to talk about with you and, and where, where you are compared to mm-hmm. where we met. So I guess the, you know the, the first thing that I'm sure people are going to wonder about is your title. It doesn't sound like a graphic design designer mm-hmm. kind of titles or job. So yeah. let's just start there. So can you just talk about uh, your job a little bit? Like what, what do you do on an everyday mm-hmm. basis? What's it, what's it like? How, how is it like graphic design or not like graphic design? <laughs> yeah. So every day is pretty much a new day. Um, we have set projects, events that we're working on. And then usually I bounce between the signage area where we're mounting graphics from the graphic design team. And then other days I'm in the paint area where I'm like painting props or repairing things. There's also like a whole wood shop where we fabricate items as well. So it's a lot of hands-on work. Um, I love the variety of it. If I wanted to do something more graphic design, I could go with the event designers because they're all in the computers in a separate room and we work with them to create what they design. Yeah, you're not you're not doing that on a regular basis. There's another role called the events graphic designer. Yeah, they're like event designers. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different roles throughout because we also have the event producers and they work with the clients and they create the theme and mm-hmm. whatnot. And then the designers mock it up and give us the sizes of everything that we need and that kind of stuff. So you're you're more in the hands-on fabricating, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, using yeah, the power tools. Yeah. So like my 3D skills is work is coming into play. Um, so it was good. St. Rose had like a nice roundabout education. Yeah. Um, so I'm still using like what I learned from school, like all the design principles and that composition color, definitely helpful for like mixing paints when you have to like match a specific color. That's like one of my favorite parts. Like when you get it right, it's so nice. <laughs> all those painting faculty are be so proud to hear that yeah. uh so did you have, did you minor in studio art or do anything like that no, no. originally going to uh, St. Rose I was going to be a photography major mm-hmm. but then after I think end of freshman year like when we split off um I went to switch to graphic design since a lot of my friends were going that route and it just seemed like a good skill set to have I felt Your like pressure. a photography degree like I went hand in hand with graphic design so might as well learn the skills for that but you didn't start like when you graduated you had right you had a couple of design jobs or more uh, traditional kind of design route Mm -hmm. when I graduated maybe a little less than a year I moved down to Miami and then I was a junior designer for Perry Ellis International so like all their fashion brands they had their golf lines um a couple women's brands and like original penguin or like their big ones so that was just corporate graphic design like design little labels, the tags that go on the clothing and stuff. So it was kind of dry. The team was great. Just wasn't a fan of Miami. So I was there for about a year and then quit my job, took a road trip with my now husband and we just ended up in Vegas. You just took a road trip out West and you end. Mm-hmm. So you didn't have a plan to go to Vegas. You were just driving around the West. And It was one of the stops we were going to make, but yeah. we didn't, we thought we'd like keep going afterwards. And we then- still haven't hit the Grand Canyon. And then you just, so on the trip, did you just stop in Vegas and that was it? You, you never went back to Miami or did you? Yeah, we had to go back to like pick up our stuff. Um, but that was it. You didn't go back yeah, and like no. work for six months and then come back. Yeah, no, we had to quit our jobs at that point. So oh, we were okay. just finding a new place to live. And I think it was like the second day we were in Vegas. I was like, I think I want to live here. It just like <laughs> felt right, something about it. And I love the desert. It's so different from growing up in Connecticut. 
Um, so then we just kept extending our Airbnb and then we looked into apartments and it was super cheap to live out here. So what is it about the desert that you, that you like? I mean, yeah, definitely there's no <laughs> desert in Connecticut or New England anywhere. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just gorgeous. I love the tumbleweeds. Um, I like the heat more. It's nice since in Vegas, we still get like a bit of change of season. So you do like bundle up in the winter, which is surprising to me. Um, it does get very windy here though. I like the climate out here. Wow. So out in the desert, are you, are you like hiking and camping and doing all those kind of outdoorsy things? Uh, to some extent. <laughs> I mean, eventually it gets too hot and you're just like, ugh. But yeah. I like Vegas since like it's a good distance between like Arches National Park, which we loved. Joshua Tree, that was another one that we really liked. So we can always hit those again. Oh, fun. Yeah, so that yeah, that's definitely different than you know, Northeast or mm -hmm. know, upstate New York. Or, you yeah. Know. You're talking about St. Rose and and you just st studied graphic design. Mm -hmm. So what parts of that, like you're talking about mixing paint, things like that. Is there anything in the graphic design area that connects with what you do now? Or is it more um, the fundamental well, parts of that? We're pretty hands off on the graphics, but like just the basics of like mounting things on foam board and stuff. like. Mm -hmm. That was like a great thing skill to have for my interview we had to make a three-dimensional cube out of foam core which is what we did i think your first semester of graphic design classes that you take so that was like a piece of cake i even brought <laughs> my own exacto blade and everything and they were very impressed that i brought my own tools <laughs> so that you was like your a own great tool set point. so yeah so some of those like hands-on production hands-on stuff design yeah skills and then just like composition and everything, because sometimes we have free reign to paint things and just making things look nice and aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> oh, so I, yeah, I know the question I wanted to ask you about, about graphic design. So specifically where, where our lives intersect. So mm -hmm. it was my first year <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, at St. Rose. And, and I think the class that you took I mean, I know the class, but I think at that point, at that time, it was an elective class. Yeah, it was advanced web. Yeah, we so, called it advanced web, which is now yeah. uh, called UX design. So, mm -hmm. so that, and it was an elective at that time. I, I, it was. I made it, I sort of uh, championed that it, it should become a requirement, which, which mm -hmm. it has been for years now. Oh, yeah, when you definitely. took it, it was, uh, it was an elective. So, <laughs> so that's my question to you. Uh, Why somebody, did I take it? Yeah, who, somebody who paints and like you love getting dirty and like mm -hmm. you're making stuff with your hands and three dimensional models and things. So, how much did you hate that class? <laughs> I think it was interesting. I didn't like going in. I think it was like a night class. So, that was like the most annoying part. But I don't know. It was fun. It was good skills to have because then when I was freelancing out of school, um, I was working with a tennis company and we were doing like e-blasts and stuff. I think it was like a credit requirement that I needed something else and that like fit it. So I took <laughs> that it. fit my schedule. So that's what I <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear that. But it's so different. <laughs> like that course, our only interaction at St. Rose, well, as mm -hmm. far as like in, in the classroom yeah, was, yeah. was that course, <laughs> which has nothing to do with what you do now. No. Yeah, no. no I remember we made the apps. And I yeah. did like a archery one. Oh yeah, like, right. It's called right. quiver. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's so so different than what you're what you're doing mm -hmm. now. I want to talk about these because it's so so th this image you sent oh, yeah. me. So mm -hmm. it was hard to pick like photos to send because we don't really get like final photos. <laughs> They're just like in the warehouse. So these are not real propane tanks. They're real propane tanks, but okay. they were pristine. Like they bought them new. So we sprayed some wall texture on one of my coworkers. That would be a great idea. So that created like that rusty texture. And then I just went to town painting it, lots of layers, spray paint, and then stenciled on. Um, and I had previously painted a couple like rusty cars and stuff. So that was a lot of fun. That's amazing. So, yeah. So how did you, did you just experiment to get to this? Like how long have you been? You've been doing this for like almost two years now. Is that right? In this yeah, position? Yeah. But I've pretty much been painting, I think in 2005, I found the model horse hobby. I joined like a forum, which is so like outdated now since everyone's on like Facebook and like Instagram. 
Yeah. But there's so many different artists there from like sculptors, painters, tack makers. So they work with leather and like casting and like all that kind of stuff. So that got me more interested in like the art side of things. And then also there are some pet portrait artists. So that's why I started doing that. Yeah, there's, I, that's when you sent me, right? This, this mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, the, the detail in here is amazing. So, how, so can you estimate, do you know how, how long it took you to do this? Um, people always ask me that and I never have a time. So I'm always like <laughs> picking at it a little. And that was yeah. like, I think that was from 2018 now, since I don't do portraits as much anymore. Growing up, I've always loved animals. Both my parents are veterinarians and they've always been very supportive of my artistic side. Um, my grandfather was a painter. So we always, instead of photos of us hanging up in our house, it was always his oil paintings and stuff. Yeah. yeah, there's just like a level of detail here that's it's like incredible. And then you can see it in these like three-dimensional objects. So in yeah, here, I think you- that's where graphic design like helps, like having the designer's eye, like you're looking for that detail, you're looking for those little nuances. And that's what creates a more dynamic piece. Yeah. So with something like this, are you are you working from a reference? Do you have a photographic reference um, or anything? We- pull some brief references sometimes the designers will give us them generally they're not much to work off of so this is just like free reign yeah they so just, we're doing like a mad max theme so they wanted everything like rusty dirty that kind uh, of stuff so yeah can you talk about that so the there is there an event or is it like a conference or what what is this these these rusty we're looking at these rusty propane tanks and this barrels one, yeah this one was a private event he was one of the high rollers so he rented out like a whole suite and like all this stuff he comes like every year to vegas and then this was just the theme that he wanted just to gamble or yes to party like (laughs) yeah all of it he invites his friends out i think oh and he (laughs) wanted a mad max but that's basically yeah huh Mm -hmm. yeah it was like end of the world so we had a lot of army rations that came in we made all these metal plates that we just like spray painted on, made them all rusty and distressed. Um, they did like a hubcap wall. So it's all about like creating an environment at all these different places. It reminds me of uh, where I used to teach at Ringling. Uh, I, I think it's really new, like maybe in the past year or two, they have a new degree called entertainment design. And I think like this would fall under that it's like theme parks and you know experiences it might I might have like virtual experiences but also Mm -hmm. you know in-person uh physical experiences but yeah it's under the umbrella of entertainment design so it has Mm. kind of the yeah I'm curious about that (laughs) yeah the experience of like going into a place whether that place Mm -hmm. is like you know digital or it's actually a, a physical environment you walk into but Um, Yeah, because the big things we do each year is New Year's. Like, that's always a ton of overtime, long hours, and then Chinese New Year. Because they're using the same ballrooms in the casinos each year, but they have to transform it for these guests. Just create, like, a whole different experience. Wow, that's that's amazing. So these are all, like, parties, right? Are there conferences that that Amazon works on or yeah there's a lot of conferences when they come through sometimes they rent out suites yeah suites um we do like CES stuff um what's you're gonna have to what's CES oh it's the like consumer electronics symposium maybe yeah that's always a big event that comes to town so just those kind of things usually it's more signage and like box outs what's a box out you use all the lingo. It. Like, I don't, I don't know. Any, <laughs> what's a box out? It's literally just taking a sign and then putting sides on it so it can hang over whatever paintings hanging in the uh, hotel room currently. Okay. Just so it just makes it different. Yeah. All right. It's a lot of hot glue and very precise work. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hot glue. How many times have you burned yourself? Definitely on our last project, we were doing like Aria Lobby. And we were making these hot air balloons and we had to like glue all different like decorations and stuff. Each balloon had like a different theme. So I burnt myself a lot then. It's pretty amazing the, the level of, of detail here. And so you, you were talking earlier about your interview. Did you, so I think last, last time we talked, you were mentioning that you applied for this job and you didn't get it the first time and then you mm-hmm. applied again. So what, can you talk about that whole like 
job search and how you found this and what what that experience what that part was like yeah so when we first moved out here like decided that we were staying we just went to the public library and we we're just like searching jobs and i was just looking at different creative things not necessarily graphic design because i knew i always wanted to eventually move away from that more just because i like more hands-on and my previous job i didn't like sitting at the computer all the time um, that's good to know so then I applied to that job, didn't hear back anything. And then a couple of years later, um, my husband had applied to a different job there and heard that they were hiring the special projects artists. Um, so I applied again and ended up getting an interview and actually got the job this time. Are you full time or is it like a not quite? A yeah, it's kind of weird. Technically, we're on call part time based on like events and stuff, but we have benefits and everything. It's like we're full time, but hours yeah. can be cut on call. So like 3 a.m. They they need a, a rusty signpost and they, they need to call. Thankfully, it. they're not like the hotel casinos and stuff, like just calling you at random hours. It's a set schedule, so it's pretty much full time. And so it's regular, well, somewhat regular hours, like like mm -hmm. during the day, nine to five or. Yeah, it's like uh, eight to four. What's the uh, structure like as far as like you have this title do you have like a creative director above you or what's the kind of positions like so technically all of us are special products artists and then above us we have supervisors that oversee things and then there's also the event designers and then there's the event producers and there's the salespeople. it just kind of like trickles down yeah as far as the top creative person who who would that be um we have like a I don't know if they're technical creative director. I don't know what their official title is. Yeah. But there is like an overseeing person. Yeah. And then it's kind of a jumble right now since the pandemic. Can you tell us um, like a salary range that a, an artist that does this kind of work? Um, I think it's about like 35 to 40, but you get like increases and it definitely mm -hmm. depends how much overtime we're doing. So definitely yeah. like when we have New Year's events and all that kind of stuff, you get a lot more. Yeah. So you have a base um, salary and then there's overtime. Yeah, technically I'm hourly, but like okay. that's what it comes out to about. Yeah. So let's <laughs> think about these. I wish my car. I I I get my car Sorry. here. There's my car. Here's my <laughs> car. <right>. Nobody <laughs> who's listening to shipping. this. If you're listening to it, you can't see it, but I'm holding up my car <laughs> that Kim designed. So uh, can you talk about this? this like side business you have which yeah. is as i mentioned it's like every time i see your announcement for mm -hmm. commissions and like then like yeah. a day later there it's all closed out because mm -hmm. you have so many yeah, people who want right these. now i feel like i'm the only one who's doing it <laughs> it's a good thing to slip into yeah it's for the video game rocket league i've been playing it since 2016 and they came out with all these little pullback racers and other models like a couple years ago they're not in stores anymore because of the model horse hobby, like I already liked customizing and painting horses. I was like, oh, I can use this skill set to cars now and see if people would buy it. It's just like a fun little creative outlet. I'll bring up your Instagram. I like sculpting here. all the little pieces and stuff. Yeah. So there's, um, so yeah, let me go back to this one here. This is, you call this mm -hmm. a topper, right? There's a little. Yeah. Yeah. They have toppers in game, but I can't do anything in game because of copyright. So I oh. kind of just did like, uh, my own take on it oh. yeah the pokemon cards those yeah. are very popular so is there a pokemon card in the video game no no oh, oh. i don't i don't play rocket league it is played <laughs> in my house i have seen mm -hmm. it i know what it is uh i don't think i've ever played it though are you any good yeah, at no. it you see like a lot of the cars with like white trim like that's very popular in game so oh, like okay. a lot of commissions are <laughs> very similar the more so fun ones are the ones that I do on my own. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the commissions are are people who play the game and, and know these yeah. references. Yeah, yeah, usually they send me a screenshot of their car and game, and I always tell them that like I need to do something original. So yeah. <laughs> sometimes they back out after that, but other times they like work with me to come up with something new. Yeah, the the ombre, the ombre or or gradient. Mm -hmm. I find that, that term ombre. The, only, the first time I ever heard that was in like uh, fashion. It's, yeah, it's uh, more like hair. It's more <laughs> Maybe that's fashion my time thing. working at Perry Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so ombre or gradient transition yeah. from one color to another. That's mm -hmm. pretty popular in here. There's a lot of cars like that. Yeah, I mean they're all hand painted, so like it's a lot of fun to, when the blend like gets just right and smooths out. 
but they're all just acrylics mainly and sometimes i use different pigments oh so this is like um paper it's paper supposed to, to look like a paper airplane yeah that's mm -hmm. fun. I have to do something that's like more catchy on the less popular bodies because everyone likes the octane, which like you see pretty much every car. That's like the basic card with the spoiler, like the marble one, the black and blue one. The, yeah, yeah, those are fun. So what is it, what's the, um, I don't know, what's the most interesting or craziest car that somebody wanted you to paint? Is there any that oh, stand out? the giraffe one that you're on right now. This I one? thought that was a lot of fun. <laughs> they just yeah. want a giraffe car, yeah. That was a challenge. I like doing the Starry Night one too. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And like making the wheels so they match the little suns. Yeah, I'd say those are the most interesting ones. I like doing the marble finishes a lot because I like yeah. doing faux finishes at work. Oh, yeah. It's always fun when we get to do marble or like the rusty like you showed before. Yeah, so it's all it's all done with paint. So what size, like, I don't know anything about painting, but like these, <laughs> these are these are like regular car like car you know yeah. toy car size so what size brush are you using for this um a lot of like size zero and smaller um sometimes i break out the colored pencils on them too since i have them might as well use them just to create different effects again i love all the variety i just like being a jack of all trades i guess yeah you can't you can't decide you can't decide what <laughs> no. you want to be when you grow no. up is that it <laughs> yeah i'm still working on it although i'm pretty happy with my job right now well that's good out, out in las vegas so so do you do you gamble? Do you go to the casinos and always oh, stay away from those? <laughs> yeah. Um, no cards. Like if I have like something that I worked on, like it's fun to go down. But generally it's pretty crazy, especially like right now. We're like 20, 25 minutes from the strip. So we're closer towards the mountains and the outskirts. I've only really been to Las Vegas once and it was it was for a conference. It was a Microsoft. <laughs> Not surprising. Conference. Yeah. I I yeah, it's, well, I do know people actually go to Vegas that are, you know, like once a year, get together with their buddies and go mm -hmm. gamble in, in, in Las Vegas. More people come visit us now than <laughs> <laughs> All your friends and family, like, yeah, yeah, now I'll come yeah. visit you. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's more to do. Years ago, I went to Las mm -hmm. Vegas and um, the one thing that I, I you know, I researched so the one thing that I had to do, the Neon Museum. I'll take you to the local spots. Have you oh, been to the museum? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was a lot of fun. We did one of the night tours when oh, I first yeah. moved here. Yeah. See, yeah, I, I went during the day. I don't think they had night tours when I went. Mm. They didn't uh they did have tours, but they didn't that building, that main building that they have mm -hmm. now, that wasn't set up then. Uh and it wasn't as as uh as funded as it is now, I think. Yeah. But um yeah it's it's amazing so that yeah the neon museum with all the old signage yeah, the old from the strip. signs yeah 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 Hotel it was cool casinos. since they gave you like a little bit of the history of it um some of the ones that they could still light up was cool and i don't know for people who are fans of type like that's a lot of fun <laughs> yeah it is interesting seeing you know yeah huge like giant letter forms you know all mm -hmm. lit up you know and sitting yeah, next to, them to, to, to see the scale of them you know the, mm -hmm. the true scale of them but um yeah, yeah it's fun because they have right i mean when i went there they were talking about it and i think i've seen photos they some of them they've restored and then put in the middle of the road right middle of the the street mm -hmm. yeah they've kind of refurbished some of them and mm -hmm. kind of made them as like sculpture out in the environment in some places so you know one of the things that the uh I want to know about is so we met at St. Rose and and you're, you're from Connecticut so and mm -hmm. you just mentioned a little bit of your your family being in the arts and being supportive mm -hmm. so can you talk about like growing up as a, as a kid before St. Rose before college and what mm -hmm. was it like you know maybe for you as far as creativity and art and design and so how did how did all that start for you it sounds like you had some family influence yeah, definitely some family influence. My dad's kind of creative too, even though he's like more little cartoony sketches, but you'd always see on his notes, like he'd have fun little drawings. <laughs> and like him and my mom would create creative birthday parties for us. Like I remember it was probably like my fourth birthday or something, but it was like Beatles themed since my dad loves the Beatles. And he created this whole like paper mache yellow submarine that we still have in our basement probably. It was just stuff like that. And then... I think it wasn't until high school, late high school, that I started taking the art classes. 
since I was doing band and that always conflicted with like APR and stuff. So it wasn't until like my junior or senior year that I was able to start taking art classes. But then also with the model horse hobby, I was getting into that more with the creative side. And that kind of pushed me to like look into the arts. Yeah. And one of my high school teachers, when I started taking pet portrait commissions in high school, they weren't very good pets. So I'm surprised <laughs> people bought them. But that kind of like pushed me to pursue that more. And then I created more of a drawing portfolio. My one high school teacher did mention graphic design. And it was like a tiny little class that we took. I remember we created like seed packets in Photoshop. So she likes gardening. Um, my portfolio was mainly photography and drawing when yeah. I applied to schools. Yeah. And how did you hear about St. Rose? I went to a portfolio review day, I think. Yeah. And so they had like all the different colleges around. So it was easy just like you table hop with your portfolio. I forget. I think this one was in Connecticut. And actually I was interested in St. Rose. But the person didn't show. So I didn't get to show my portfolio and get the portfolio review done. So I ended up applying and then I went in person to do my portfolio review. With your your side project, you're all over Instagram. You have like three <laughs> three profiles on Instagram. Yeah, three accounts. I don't post to my personal though. Yeah. Not so much my art account either. It's mainly the cars these days. So with so the mainly the cars, is that how people find your uh you on uh they find you on instagram with the cars mm -hmm. and then they reach yeah, out yeah to... when i was when i was doing like when i was in between jobs i had a website and everything so i pushed that a lot more but then just to like save money like i didn't need the website when i wasn't actively pursuing portraits and stuff um so i ended up taking that down and then it's mainly just instagram and then yeah. etsy Let's see so how long have you been on etsy maybe like three years i think that i actually had a shop open and had things I originally was selling like um, my original drawings and like greeting cards with my drawings. And then once I switched to the cars and those are being more popular, I kind of switched over. And you mentioned last time we talked that there's like they don't make the cars anymore. What's going to happen when you <laughs> when you run out of cars? I mean, I job, may like... break down and buy more on eBay. Hopefully yeah. they come up with at least more Hot Wheels octanes. And so I kind of like resupplied there, but like I have so many stuff. You Anytime have, I saw them in stores, I hoard them. <laughs> oh, you're that person in line who's yeah, just like yeah. cleared off the shelf. I mean, usually I'd leave like one if someone <laughs> wanted one, but by the time that they were out for a while, I would just take them all. You know, with the with the job, which is working for these events, is uh do you see this evolving into some other position or are there other because i think the last time we talked you said like this position you have with mgm is somewhat rare like there is that true or like how, what's like the future yeah. for you or a potential future for you with this kind of mm -hmm. work i think i'm gonna stay in it i mean there's a lot of events and stuff in the city and i like the variety of it the hands-on nature i actually did I guess like freelance with another fabrication company because they just needed help there creating something to go in Bellagio Conservatory. So I helped out with the painting there with my other coworkers. So that was a lot of fun. So there's other companies around, but MGM is the only big um, casino brand that has an in-house event team work on. Usually it's like a lot of smaller ones that just get the contracts. It seems like you could, you know, like go to LA and like work on movie it's so sets. Expensive. Like, well, yeah, other than that, but like the skill <laughs> yeah, set I that mean, you're building, you know, like, you mm -hmm. know, working on in like a production uh, part of, of movie sets, right? Yeah, that's similar. kind of like what that last project that I was doing this weekend felt like. It was like a 20 by 30 castle wall facade, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, so we were making it look all like mossy and like stone. So that was a lot of fun. I mean, originally, that's what I wanted to get into. It's super competitive, though, and hard to come across those jobs. So I like all the prop making and stuff, but yeah, I, can't, yeah. I, can't I don't really like LA. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's where the movies are, right? Or well, yeah, yeah. I guess not all. I guess of them. Atlanta has a lot of them too. Yeah. A lot of production there. Yeah. But I don't really want to go to Georgia either. No. Uh, so it's just Las <laughs> Vegas. That's the only place. Yeah. I'm happy here. Yeah. And, and what's the, you mentioned New Year's uh, and the Chinese New Year. Are there seasons where like things are, there's a lot of conferences or a lot of, Mm -hmm. events happening can you tell you like what when is that like what, what are the yeah, cycles so this, of your job 
the summer's generally slower and then pretty much picking up after Halloween through maybe January, beginning of February, whenever I think Chinese New Year's like, oh no, Super Bowl's the last big thing we usually do. Oh, right. So like that whole chunk of time, it's usually like longer hours since there's just so many events to get done. And then it's kind of like moderate the rest of the year. So, so what do you do when you're, when you're not at work out there in Las Vegas? I've gone to the dry lake beds a few times, but it's mainly playing video games. What's the dry <laughs> lake video games bed? Or like working on my hobbies, you know? Oh, oh, it's like a place where it used to be a lake, but it's all like that typical, like desert, like craft. Like a lot of people do photo shoots there and stuff. A lot of movies shot there. Fashion like, photo think, shoots. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much anytime you go out there, you see someone in like a gown and they're taking photos. <laughs> What else? What else? We, what did we talk about last time? There was a good notes. sound bite that we had, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't Something remember. about graphic design being a great foundation. We were talking about, yeah, that studying graphic design and how it could be, it could lead a lot of different uh, mm-hmm. paths, you know, for, for different people. So yeah, I feel like when you get into it, you feel like it is just like logos, websites, that kind of stuff. But then once you learn the skill sets, you see that there's so many different creative collaborations that you can do, and like different photography. Like I was really into food styling too when I was in college. I wanted to do that, but that didn't work out. That's um, pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's. Yeah. I yeah, feel like you have to go to New York City and stuff to do that. And I didn't want to do that. What's the most challenging thing you had to had to uh, recreate or like fake doing a lot of like faux finished marble on a tight deadline (laughs) because like a lot of times we don't have much time to work on things we're waiting on approvals and stuff so then when we finally get a go like a mad dash for like one new year's they were doing a lot of gray marble and like on different busts and stuff and they wanted like a neon hot pink like veining so that was just like a weird thing to do but i mean it looked nice in the end (laughs) <laughs> so how do you fake marble? Is it all paint? Or is there? Yeah, it's a lot things? of paint. It's important to like keep it wet so you can like blend it nicely. And then a lot of dry brushing too. Oh, and then okay. just painted the veining. I mean, oh. you look at marble and you do it. <laughs> you look at marble and you do it. And then do you have to like coat it with something so it looks shiny and flat? Or? Um, generally, we don't put a finish on it because these props get repainted so many times. Oh, okay. um, so then you see like layers of buildup from the paint over the years like some of that stuff has been there for like over a decade now it's time for the pop quiz don't worry you can't fail this okay so sketchbook blank or gridded blank blank so sketching it yeah this question i don't know uh so you're in a workshop kind of like hands-on do you mm-hmm. have a work beverage um if we have like a tight deadline or something i'll do like kickstart which is like an energy drink but oh, it has, like, one of those. It. <laughs> yeah, it's less sugar than like a Red Bull and stuff. Oh, after work <laughs> beverage? Um, some sort of vodka drink some or like a dry of... mead. So, music you listen to when you're when you're working? I like listening to full albums. So usually it's something by Third Eye Blind, Killers, or like Airborne Toxic event. Desert or water? That's one. tough since I grew up going to the beach in New Jersey. But I have to say desert now. <laughs> you have to say desert now. Okay. Favorite car body that you have, that you've painted? What's what's the favorite one that, that you like I to paint? I guess the Octane. I'm pretty basic. Final thoughts. So what are your takeaways from your experience so far? What would you tell current students or younger designers? Um, I guess just like follow your passions more. It's pretty cliche, but like you can find so many different creative spaces and like, don't be afraid to try something new. Cause you may find you like it more than what you're doing. Yeah. I think that's good. I think, I think one of the things that why well, I want to talk to you is like you, you are doing this thing that is very hands-on. It's very, mm-hmm. like you're, you're making things, right. You're not on the computer. And I think there's a tendency for a lot of people uh, to study graphic design and think mm-hmm. that it's like they have to use the computer to, to have a fulfilling career or to, to be creative. Yeah. And that's, yeah, or to not, get a paycheck even. Yeah, to be, yeah, I mean, that's that's certainly like what a lot of people are afraid yeah. of, right? You know, some of those jobs are harder to come by mm-hmm. you know, if you're making yeah. things with your hands, especially if you want to be a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you know. but it's nice when you can include your own photography or like your own illustrations, like hand-drawn type. I mean, there's still a lot of avenues that you can try. 
So yeah, I think it's also great to be able to communicate with the designers too, because like I know where they're coming from. I know more of their capabilities and stuff and then like how to create our relationship based on that. Well, it's great to see you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for, thanks for, thanks for sharing your projects. It was, it was really cool to see all those, that range of stuff that you're <laughs> all working over the on. Place. <laughs> yeah. All over the place. That's good though. Keeping yeah. you busy. Well, yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. So what do we learn from Kim? Get off the computer once in a while. Make something with your hands. And take a road trip. You might find the next place you want to live. Thanks to Kim Skudlerik of MGM Resorts. If you have any comments or questions for me or any of the guests, please leave them in the comments and subscribe so you can catch the next episode of Design Futures. Until next time, go learn something. Your future depends on it. Thanks for listening. See ya.